Good morning. It's Amanda. Um, look at people a second to log on here. Um, uh, okay, so I have a quick video on how to live harmoniously with other people. This is specifically uh, for families, but it can work with any sort of roommates that you may have. And uh, good morning, Stephen. And um, today, I think I might do a series of these. Today is episode one. It's uh, how to empty a dishwasher and the uh, philosophies, dynamics, logistics of the kitchen flow. Hi, Sarah. Uh, hi, Tracy. Uh, Tracy, I know you're probably an expert because I know you got a lot of kids and you've been through this. But uh, this is the basics of uh, the kitchen workflow. When you wake up in the morning and people have eaten snacks or had drinks after you did the kitchen dishes from dinner, and I can see all the dirty dishes, um, you wake up to see a pile of dishes in the sink, which is my personal pet peeve, dishes in the sink, especially when I first wake up in the morning. And it's and they're in the sink because the dishwasher is full of clean dishes. At this point of the process, usually your children will then just stop, put the dishes in the sink, hopefully, if they're not still on the kitchen table, and leave the room. This is a bad move. I'm just telling you right now, kiddos. If you want to make your parents happy and therefore your world happier, you will go to step B. Um, which is emptying the dishwasher. And if you can show initiative, you get extra points. So emptying the dishwasher. My daughter personally, she's our official dishwasher emptier and she's still asleep because she's 18 and it's a Sunday afternoon, almost. She'll put the Tupperware in the dish rack initially, which is totally fine with me as long as they end up in the cupboard because they're still a little wet. The plastic will be wet look for dishes that look like the dishes in the dishwasher and put them with those. Now, my daughter has mastered this step, but when she does it, it looks like something out of Dr. Seuss. If the bowls look like this when you put them away, that is not the correct way to do it. You want them neatly stacked on top of each other so it doesn't look like the cat in the hat was in your house bowls, plates. Then these are usually a big stumper. If you don't know what the unusual looking things are, you don't need to know. You just need to know where the other ones are. So you might have to look around, open some cupboards, and look for things that look like that. So we have a lot of unusual small plates. Obviously we had some cookies earlier this week. Sometimes, here's a tip, they might be behind other dishes. Pro tip, okay. We're gonna assume that you did the lower rack and then you wanna do, or the top rack, and you wanna do the lower rack. Here's where things get dicey. By the way, my husband's gonna do another series on how to do it better than me, but we'll save that for another day. So this is where we, we have an issue. I'm just gonna show you the lower rack here. Can you see that? I don't want to drop anything here. He's got Tupperware. Oh, here, let's back it up a little bit. Tupperware on top of the other dishes, which got them clean. I personally don't like that, but his episode will be called Maximizing Your Load. Mark my words. So then you have weird things like, like this, which we don't use very often, but in our kitchen, we leave it, we have a, like a really thin cupboard next to the oven where we bake cookies where weird things like that go. Again, my daughter will put the still wet plastic things on top. And then once again, you look for objects that look the same in the cupboards. And we don't slam them down. We gently put things that might chip away. Otherwise, you end up with a brand new set of plates with chips in them from being smacked up there. So you don't want to brush it, but you don't have to move slowly. All right, final step. We're gonna assume we put everything away. The silverware. I personally like to put spoons, knives, and forks all in similar things, but clearly that's not being done. I'm just happy they're in there. And I start with the unusual items first. Kids, usually you're gonna find something on the counter, or I guarantee you your parents have a drawer full of things that just don't fit anywhere else. 
You just have to open the drawers and then look. And then again, do what we've always been doing, find things that look alike and put them in the drawers. So that is my first, first episode of how to live harmoniously with other people. Once this dishwasher is empty, kids, then you know what can happen? All these dishes in the sink can then go in to the empty dishwasher and the process starts again. And yes, especially in quarantine during stay at home, you may have to do this once a day or sometimes twice a day because you're eating most of your meals at home. Hi Dave, hi Jay, hi Greg. Anybody feeling me? Anybody feeling me this morning? Can you tell I woke up and was like, oh my God. Yeah, so I, I, I have an inspiration for loading the dishwasher tomorrow, so I might do another video tomorrow. I'll, I'll try to post a quick one every day because for some reason, my kids will go onto YouTube and watch a video tutorial on how to empty the dishwasher. But if I visually do it for them in person, um, they don't see it. They don't hear it. It doesn't sink in. So, so I'm going to the video because I know my kids will maybe eventually see this on YouTube and, and learn how to empty the dishwasher um, so that the rest of the kitchen flow can happen. So if this doesn't happen, then the cooking doesn't happen because I can't cook in a dirty kitchen. Just, just saying kids, if you want to eat, gotta help with the kitchen flow. All right, I hope you guys are having a good morning. Uh, again, I'm gonna try to post these every day. Loading the dishwasher will be next. Oh, and just to give you something to look forward to uh, on a future episode, we're gonna be going over the microwave and how to cover things with tomato sauce so that you don't then don't have to watch my next video on how to clean the inside of the microwave. There's actually a couple cool hacks on that too. So good morning, Nancy, hey Valerie. So there you go, episode one of how to live more harmoniously with other people.